Welcome everyone. Here I'm going to be talking about BFLA3, so I hope you guys are excited. Start of the day, um, really enjoyed this event. I'll let you guys kind of get a little idea here of what we were doing, but it's at an abandoned airfield in uh, Victorville, California. Um, I think this place has been abandoned since about the 80s, so it's kind of a cool place to play because you can kind of walk through some of these barracks and the buildings and you're thinking... Slash leading the, uh, kind of giving me information on where the, where the squad's going. So at this event, it's a de just des sure desert that. fox event, and it's yeah, wicked okay. because yeah, they've designed an app for it. So he's asking me if I can kind of uh, keep an eye on where all of our squad are on the app. We all have phones on us, which kind of pinpoint where we are, and you can see all of the blue team, which we were playing today, and where they were located. Uh, we had the lighter camo, as you can see, greys and multi cam. Okay, so two, uh, two more buildings. Hey, uh, Sugi, we have to move two more buildings over, and that's the objective. So the game actually lasts for all day. There's no kind of safe zone time or going back to the safe zone or lunch or anything like that. So you have to have water, food, uh, everything you need for the day, all of your ammo, everything like that. And you're only allowed, I think it's seven mid-cap mags. So they're wanting to make it more milsim, but not kind of full milsim. Um, you know, it's not very, very strict on those kinds of rules. But it's an interesting place. Victorville, um, there's a lot of military bases, I think, there and uh, this place is, is really weird. So if you're ever in that That's area, definitely in, check it out. Um, but it was a Jet Desert Fox event, really well organized. Um, it was my first big event I think I've been to, um, which has not been kind of your day's airsoft play. Again, you normally have those 20 minute, 40 minute games, you're coming back. Yeah, his nose is itching, I think, because there was a ton of asbestos in the buildings, which they warned us about before. Uh, also a lot of broken glass, metal, shards, burnt down buildings like that one. Um, again, it's a really cool environment to play in. You have to sign a waiver beforehand saying you're not going to sue anyone. A lot of people stepped on nails and that had a couple of cuts. Um, so just make sure if you go and play at this site or this location that you uh, keep an eye on yourself. Um, so I was playing with Team Reaper actually, a soft team. Um, that is another thing I would say is if you're going to these events, playing with some guys you know, having a good set of communications like the radios, uh, it changes the game because you're not losing people when you're going back to respawn uh, and you can actually communicate and work together as a team to try and ob achieve objectives. Um, this is still at the start of the day, we're clearing houses, yeah. unfortunately yeah. my scope cam wasn't working, uh, but Sugi here is one of the uh, Reaper actual oh team leaders. Um, leading me through this building to clear. So just making sure we're clearing every corner so that our guys coming through aren't getting ambushed. I wish I'd heard nice. that blue team because I came around the corner, that was one of our guys. Uh, I didn't say anything when he said blue team, so that's my fault. Shot me. Um, Tourniquet is, this is really cool, so this event has uh, good revive rules. If you get shot the first time and you have a tourniquet, you can put that around your arm or one of your teammates can and revive you. Um, if you have been shot already once and been revived, you have to go back to one of the respawn points. They're shown on the app and when you get to the app, you have to stand there for a period of time before you respawn and you're shown back as alive, um, which I thought was really cool. Um, the other thing which is amazing with this is it's very much like a video game because you have capture points. Um, the points, are basically it's like domination, so if you're going and capturing um, one point you need to be close to it, standing very close, this pit. So I think one of our guys threw a grenade into that building and took three guys out with one grenade, which was quite a nice one. Um, Again, you could use pyros at this event, which was a very odd thing, because in know, Southern California, generally, you can't use that. that. It's just said that the police are here investigating a potential meth lab. Yeah, so we got an update. <laughs> Apparently, uh, one of the squads had gone into one of the buildings and discovered a meth lab. Um, so it's probably the perfect place to have a meth lab, I'm sure, like an abandoned airsoft base that all the buildings look the same. Uh, but as I was saying, they had they also allowed pyros at the site. Um, unfortunately, not only the police were there, but we also then had, I think, eight visits from different fire engines, because as you can see, this place is very dry, and uh, it obviously is like tinder, so if you get any flame around it, it starts going up, and that happened multiple times. So actually, halfway through the day, they announced, please stop using pyros. You can use your CO2 grenades, they're absolutely fine, but let's stop starting fires, because it's gonna get very expensive. So um, when they did that, they actually kind of put a little pause on the game. This is us getting back into the fight. I've got my scope cam now. 
Sugi's coming through, and uh, yeah, you can see how dangerous this could be, stepping on nails, etc., which quite a few guys did, I think, during the day. Um, definitely unlike usual airsoft, where you're taking breaks in the uh, safe zone, there's a lot more player fatigue. First three hours, four hours, it's all good, uh, and then you're getting very hot, because it was unbelievably hot. You're obviously carrying a lot of gear, and you're going through these buildings with some shade, uh, but it's definitely pretty tiring. So uh, just be aware of that. Not that that's a bad thing, I think it's a great experience for that reason. Um, but definitely not your standard airsoft game day. Okay, again, we're trying to move some of this debris out of the way. Um, I like going through this stuff because I wonder what was life like for the soldiers living in these buildings all that time ago. But yeah, they told us asbestos in the buildings, broken glass, metal, just be careful. Um, also, actually, I think on the second day, apparently one of the players had a Thunderbee CO2 grenade filled with BBs that was on his lapel, and it went off and blew into his neck. So I think he had to go to hospital, and that was quite serious. He didn't die, but uh, I can imagine the pain from that must have been horrible. Um, these guys are just so good to play with, the Team Roof Ratchel team. Um, that's going to be getting hit again. So that was my first hit, obviously. Uh, I actually had a tourniquet on me, so I was getting that ready in case this guy could run and grab me and pull me to safety. Um, obviously, you don't want to be tourniqueted in the line of fire, so he's getting me out of that, and then uh, we can put the tourniquet on me. But yeah, really well organized. We arrived at the event. Jet was actually there, um, chronoing weapons, and that was really cool, actually. They chronoed everyone's weapons and they would put a sticker on the upper and lower receiver so you couldn't open it up and change out the spring you know increase the fps anything like that but they had all of that they had a check-in um you could uh, buy some stuff from some vendors there as well yeah there was no um kind of minimum engagement distance which i actually really like i think if, especially if you're in buildings like this coming around a corner uh, you don't want to be like bang bang or any of that. If you get hit and it hurts and you bleed, that's kind of what happens and this is much more realistic for that reason. Luckily my scope cam is now working, which is good. Um, but had to bring all your water with you, your food, your ammunition as I said, for the day, limited on mags. I think also uh, last year or two years ago at this site they found uh, a dead person in one of the buildings. Um, so again, it is, it's just a really interesting place to play. Um, again, communication, a lot of these people you don't know because if they're in your, in your team but not in your squad. So getting this guy out of uh, the line of fire to revive him. I get hit during it, great. Uh, the revives took a long yeah, time, yeah. so the first time you were res, that was great, but you were definitely very careful not to get shot oh, again, because it was 10-15 minute walk away from your team back to a revive zone, and then you're coming all the way back again, so it's not like a quick two minutes. I got the guy at the blue building! So I remember this bit, I heard the two guys behind me, one guy just revived me, got hit, and they called hit, and I was like, where is the person that shot them, I need to get off this wall. Ran round, saw a guy coming around that corner, so I took him out, but then there was a guy on my left, I think, who put a shot in and hit me on the arm when he saw me firing. So unfortunately, that is not a revive. I'm going to be doing a very long walk back to the respawn. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want me to do some longer stuff and talk through it like this or shut up and be quiet, let me know. Goodbye.